Hey, you have an exam to study for. Your age of reform test is tomorrow. So let's get started. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to Virtual History 360. I'm Mr. Wade, and today we are reviewing for your Age of Reform test. Now, looking at the reforms of the 19th century, remember 19th century means 1800s, right? Looking at them, we have broken them down in our scale to three main levels. The first level covers the social reform movements that came out of the Second Great Awakening, such as education and prison reform, right? The second level we focused on was the women's rights movement, including the push for suffrage. You know how challenging that was. And then the third level that we focused on was the early abolitionist movement. So let's break down the levels to help you prepare for the test. Now, the Second Great Awakening was an increase of religious fervor or enthusiasm that was fueled by revivals that changed the message from sin to salvation and greatly increased participation in churches of the country as a whole, but specifically New York, that was a hotbed. This led to people seeking to change things to make them better, and these are the reformers. For education, we have Horace Mann. He believed that everyone deserved an education. He fought for co-education where boys and girls would be taught together so that everyone would have the opportunity to improve themselves. Then you have men like Thomas Gallaudet, I believe that's how it's pronounced, and Samuel Gridley Howe who pushed for the education of the, for the deaf and the blind respectively. For prison reform, we have Dorothea Dix who witnessed the horrid conditions and spoke out against them. See, she was especially appalled by the fact that people who had committed no crime but were only dealing with mental illness and they were housed with criminals. Bad situation in general and then the conditions even worse, so she spoke out about it to raise awareness and push for separate facilities for the mentally ill. Now on to the women's rights and suffrage. Remember, suffrage means the right to vote. Now, there are some big names to remember from this movement, such as Lucretia Mott, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Sojourner Truth, and Susan B. Anthony. You should know that these women worked for equality because women are equal to men, not just suffrage and the ability to vote. For example, for an example of this, excuse me, check out this video up around here about Sojourner Truth, which highlights her Ain't I a Woman speech. Moving on. At the Seneca Falls Convention in 1848, the, which was the first of its kind, mind you, multiple resolutions were passed and drafted into the Declaration of Sentiments, which was modeled after the Declaration of Independence, and modified the opening line, started with, We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal. You know who was at Seneca Falls? Frederick Douglass. Not only was he an advocate for women's rights, but an abolitionist as well. Former enslaved people such as Frederick Douglass or Sojourner Truth knew the importance of fighting for equality. They had to fight for their own, and they wanted to spread it to everyone. They were joined by other abolitionists, notably William Lloyd Garrison, who published the anti-slavery newspaper called The Liberator, as well as Harriet Beecher Stowe, another author who was able to spread the message of the horrors of slavery with her novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin, which was based on the life of Josiah Henson. If you would like to see The Homestead, which is in Ontario, a little town called Dresden in Ontario, Canada, check out this 360 video right about here. On the opposite extreme from Garrison and Stowe was John Brown. John Brown took matters into his own hands and tried to end slavery. From bleeding Kansas to the raid on Harper's Ferry, Brown dedicated his life to the cause. However misguided, he believed that by stealing weapons from the arsenal, he could arm the local slaves and start an uprising. Although the raid was a failure, he became a martyr for the abolitionist cause after his execution. But now I want to hear from you. Are you ready for the test? Is there anything that we covered in class that I didn't talk about here? I'm sure I missed something. Help out your classmates by commenting below. 
While you're there, go ahead and hit that like button for me so YouTube knows to share this video with everyone. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You know, if that button's red, let's go ahead and turn it gray. And be sure to check out my other videos like the ones you see to the side over here popping up now. Don't forget the original reform video. You can watch that video or watch that to review by clicking on the box at the top. I have also I also have other history, US and world. I also have civics, government. I have 360, 360 where you can look all the way around. So do yourselves a favor, check them out. I know you're gonna like them, alright? So for virtual history 360, I'm Mr. Wade. I'll see you next time.